All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Justin Mopoy. Uh, my name is Tristan Kim. Hi, my name is Georgia Silva. My name is Dennis. And we are presenting Frogs versus Rats. All right, so background for frogs. So frogs belong to a kingdom called Animalia, the phylum Chordata, class Amphibians, order Salientia, and family Rinidae. Frogs are vertebrates that can live both on water and land, but must return to water in order to produce offspring. Frog eyes are characteristically bulging, giving them a 180 degree field of vision. Skins of frogs are usually very moist and smooth due to their mucous glands. Frogs are consumers and eat crickets, fruit flies, worms, and dubia roaches. An abiotic factor for cascade frogs is the climate change or increase in temperature. A biotic factor is a predation and competition for food. So frog mating patterns and behaviors. First, the male vocalizes which calls the females. Then the female vocalizes her response. The male then goes onto the female with its legs open, which releases sex cells through the holes in the body. This is a position called amplexus. So this is actually amplexus. Um, since male frogs do not have a penis, they just directly release their sperm into the female frogs, as you can see in this image. Uh, mating usually occurs in the water, and they can expel between 3,000 and 20,000 eggs per mating event. Some frogs have unique mating rituals, such as the Indian bullfrog or Hoplobatrachus tigerinus. For most of the year, these frogs are brownish color, but during the mating season, the males become yellow and the vocal sacs become blue, as you can see in the images to our right. So the reproductive systems of frogs. Both male and female frogs have cloacas, which is used as a passage of sperm and eggs. And usually, these cloacas are actually part of the digestive system. Males have testes that are attached to the kidneys, while females have two oviducts and two ovaries. Excretory system of a frog. A frog's excretory system is made of the kidneys, urinary bladder, ureter cloaca. Just like humans, the major human organ of a frog's excretory system is the kidneys. Their kidneys are made of structural and functional units named uriniferous tubules of nephrons. In male frogs, two ureters emerge from the kidneys. In female frogs, the ureters open up separately in the cloaca. Frogs excrete urea, and so this classifies it as a uridelic animal. Excretory waste is taken to the kidneys by blood, and here it is separated and then excreted. So the digestive system of frogs. The major organs of frog's digestive system includes large and small intestines, the stomach, the cloaca, mouth, pharynx, and the esophagus. It goes in through the mouth, then the pharynx, then the esophagus, then the stomach, then the small intestine, then the large intestine, and then finally the cloaca. Frogs swallow their prey whole, and humans and frogs share many similarities in their digestive system. They share a lot of organs, and the processes are mainly the same. For the frog's circulatory system, it consists of the heart, blood, and lipid system. The main function of this is to move all the important liquids and gaseous materials to where they are needed. Additionally, it also takes away the gaseous and liquid waste from metabolism over to the organs that will rid of the waste. The circulatory system of a frog is closed, which means that the blood goes only in one direction and goes from the heart through the circulatory route and then back to the heart. A frog's circulatory system is composed of veins, arteries, two complete circuits, and a three-chambered heart. The muscular system of a frog. There's three types of muscles in a frog. The skeletal system, smooth, and the cardiac. Frogs and rats both use the skeletal and muscles for movement, and the muscles in both species are typically connected to bone by tendon. Movement is achieved when the skeletal muscles contract or relax. This type of muscle use is voluntary, which means that the brain of the frog controls what happens by weight. The nervous system of the frog, the brain consists of the following part, the olfactory lobe, which is the center of sense and smell connected to nostrils by the nerves. The cerebrum, which regulates behavior and learning, reasoning and maternal care. The cerebellum, which, is the co which coordinates balance with movement, 
and the optic lobe, which is sensitive for sight and hearing. Frogs do not have an external ear, as both eardrums and hepatic membranes are exposed to the outside world. Frogs in the food chain slash web. Frogs are considered secondary consumers because they eat animals that eat the plants, which are producers. Immature tadpoles are considered herbivores that mainly eat stems, algae, and leaves. When tadpoles mature, they become omnivores and eat both plants and insects. When these tadpoles become adult frogs through metamorphosis, they become carnivores and no longer eat plant or algae. Locomotion of frogs. The frog's powerful hind legs are adapted for both swimming and leaping. Their strong muscles of the thigh contract and extend the limb, which pushes their foot against the ground against the water. Um, frogs mostly use their hind legs to like push off of the ground to move across land and water, and they can leap as 20 times their body length on the level surface. Background for rats. So they're in the kingdom of Animalia, the phylum Chordata, the class Mammalia, the order Rodentia, and the family Muridae. Rats are various medium-sized long-tailed rodents. Rats are famous for being able to chew through things like soft concrete, wood, plastic, aluminum, and cinder blocks. Rats are excellent swimmers and can tread water for up to three days, holding their breath for a long time. Rats are also outstanding climbers and will climb trees and get into your home via the roof. House rats eat nearly anything digestible especially stored grains. Brown rats hunt a wild range of prey, including shrimp, snails, mussels, insects, and bird eggs. Biotic factors. Rats are rodents that actually serve a purpose in the ecosystem. They're scavengers and opportunistic eaters, and they will eat garbage and other things that people throw away. Rat mating patterns and behavior. Brown rats reach sexual maturity in a short five to seven weeks, and then they start breeding. If conditions are right, the mischief, which is another word for a group of rats, could feasibly increase its number by four times in just a few months. The rat's lifespan is up to three years and it can breed for the majority of its life. Excretory system in rats. The urinary system of rats contain a pair of kidneys, the ureters, a urinary bladder, and a urethra. The lower urinary tract consists of the ureters, urinary bladder, and urethra. It functions primarily to transport urine formed in the kidneys, the urinary bladder, for storage until ultimate excretion. The purpose of the excretory system is to excrete liquid waste and salt from the body while regulating blood pressure and pH. Rat circulatory system. The circulatory system of a rat is quite similar to a human. The circulatory system of a rat is split up into two parts, those being pulmonary and systematic circulation. Pulmonary circulation is the circulation of blood from the heart and the lungs. Systemic circulation is the circulation between the heart and the rest of the rat's body, minus the lungs. A rat has three major large veins, which are the right superior vena cava, left superior vena cava, and the inferior vena cava. The left and right vena cava carry blood from both sides of the head and neck. The inferior vena cava is in charge of bringing blood from the lower part of the body to the heart. Reproductive system in rats. The testes, the male gonads, are large oval-shaped lobes found in the scrotum, slightly interior to the anus on the ventral side of the organism. Said the testes are tubules where sperm cells are made. Prior to mating, the, contra the contraction of muscles moves the bacula into the penis, stiffening it for copulation. 
The gonads of the female rat are the paired ovaries. The ovaries release egg cells into the oviduct. During ovulation, oviducts attached to the ovaries receive the mature eggs. Pregnant rats undergo labor for one to two hours. Rats normally give birth to seven to 12 offsprings per liter. When the young rats are born, they are hairless and their eyelids remain sealed and ear ducts plugged. All right, so the digestive system of rats. A rat's digestive system is made up of these organs, the stomach, the small and large intestine, the spleen, the duodenum, the rectum, liver, and pancreas. A rat has many salivary glands as well, up to four pairs actually. The first pair is called the parotid gland and it lies beneath the ear. The next pair of glands is called the submaxillary gland, which is close to another gland that is called the sublingual gland. And the last gland is called the infraorbital gland. The saliva from these glands helps to digest starch from food, such as this pizza. The nervous system of a rat. The nervous system of a rat can be split into three groups. The central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system, and the autonomic nervous system. The central nervous system of a rat has the brain and spinal cord in it. It controls most of the rat's function. The peripheral nervous system has nerves from the brain and the spinal cord. This is in charge of sending signals from the brain to the spinal cord to the body. These nerves are called cranial nerves and spinal nerves. Now, the autonomic system of rats have sympathetic nerve cords. The ANS is in charge of things like heart rate, blood pressure, and respiration. The muscular system of a rat. Skeletal muscles used for movement of the appendages, trunk, head, jaw, eyes, etc. Visceral smooth muscles found in the wall are found in the walls of the digestive tract, arteries, veins, uterus, bladder, and many glands. Cardiac muscle or a special type of muscle found only in the heart. Um, bicep branchi located on the interior surface of the humerus, which is the arm. Um, the action is that it flexes the lower arm. The biceps femoris are located on the side of the thigh in two bundles. Uh, the action is it flexes the lower leg. And the external oblique is located on the sides of the abdomen and the action is that it flexes body wall. The pectoralis major slash minor is located in the chest area. And the action is the adduct's arm, which means it draws it forward. All right, locomotion of rats. Rats generally move along the same pathway, forming noticeable runs or leaving smear marks or fecal droppings along the route. Rats typically move along routes previously used and remember these using kinesthesis, which is muscle awareness slash muscle, muscle memory, and touch. Black rats are superior climbers and can climb any slightly rough surface up or down. Brown rats can jump vertically more than 77 centimeters and 120 centimeters horizontally. Kangaroo rats have bipedally. Bipedalism is a form of ter terrestrial locomotion where an organism moves by means of its two rear limbs or legs. Kangaroo rats often leap a distance of seven feet and reportedly up to nine feet, which is 2.75 meters, at speeds up to almost 10 feet per second or 10 kilometers an hour, six miles per hour. They could quickly change directions between jumps. Rats in the food web. Although rats often attack and eat smaller animals, such as mice, birds, and insects, a rat is near the bottom of the food chain and near the outside of the food web. Rats are known for their scavenging, but many people don't know that they actually play a vital role in the food web. They convert plant material into forms that hawks, owls, and snakes can consume. Their roles as harvesters of seeds, uh, rodents actively shape our landscape, transporting seeds and pollen far distances. Now. The reason we created these slides was 
due to us dissecting a rat and a frog in lab. And through this process, we saw that they had very, two very different looking bodies, you know, they were extremely different. So we wanted to make these slides to show the differences between the two animals. Thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed our presentation.